Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Adrian Taka, and I thank you for staying with me till the very end here. It is seven in the morning for me here in Las Vegas, uh, but we will make it through this final one. I'm going to talk to you today about containers in Azure and uh, just a little bit about me. I am a senior developer advocate for MongoDB, so if you have any questions about that, I'd love to answer any of them at the end of this. So, as with all the other sessions, we would love for you to join us on the Discord channel. And um, any questions that you may have, I also have a dedicated channel in case I miss any of your questions during my session now, or if you think of something else or just want to say hi, come join us over on the Discord session. Also, if you are collecting badges, as I know we all like to collect things, uh, you can visit the Azure Heroes channel in Discord to learn more about getting the learner badge, which you all get for being an attendee of the Global Azure Virtual uh, Event. So make sure to check that out. And of course, we want to take some time to thank our sponsors. Without them, none of this would be possible. And for the quick turnaround of creating a virtual event, we really want to say thank you. So to our platinum sponsors, our gold and silver sponsors, thank you, thank you so much. Without you, uh, we wouldn't be able to do this. This is really, really, really fun. And last but not least, uh, we also have the Azure Masterclass series from the European Cloud Conference. I cannot believe these kinds of classes are free, so please check them out. They sh should be something here that is uh, something that you would like to learn, and I'm sure there's something for everybody here. So please check this out as well. So now that all the housekeeping is done, let's get a little bit into the agenda. We're going to start with what software development was like before containers. And after that, we'll talk a little bit about, well, what are containers? After that, I'd like to talk to you about container services in Azure and specifically the four that you see, the container registry, the container instances, the web app for containers, and the Azure Kubernetes service and what those all are and what they may be used for if you are thinking about taking a container-based approach to your software development workflow. And finally, after learning about these things, I want to kind of discuss, you know, which one uh, do you use once you now know what they are used for? Because some are similar and some have different use cases and some are better for other things. So hopefully we can break down what use cases are best for each. So before containers, what was that like? Well, when we were creating software, and at least in the experience that I've had, there have been three major issues that were occurring before containers kind of emerged onto the scene. So tricky issue number one is, well, <laughs> multiple target environments. This has been the bane of every developer's existence, and it's always that classic joke, it works on my machine, or it works anywhere but prod. And also for new hires who are just getting started, it's always a pain to kind of get them set up because you need to download all of these dependencies, download this specific version of something. And we all know the headache that comes with targeting uh, multiple environments in all these different kinds of scenarios. The next tricky issue comes with configuration. So because there are so many environments that we try to support, we try to work around that by, you know, having configuration, not just configuration settings for the application itself and what it needs, but maybe some configuration to deal with this really tricky issue number one of targeting multiple environments. What that also leads to is the tricky issue number three, which is version control for scripts. And what I mean by this is sometimes when we deal with configuration, we kind of end up with either really long verbose configuration files, or we have really, really long scripts that try to do that for us, that try to do um, what we'll see in a moment, what containers can already do for us. But 
naturally, when we try to iterate on these scripts, it can become really difficult to see what has actually changed in these really long scripts, and it can even get harder to understand what's happening in them. So all of these things have been kind of prevalent issues in the world of software development. So what are containers? Well, for me, the best explanation that I can understand the term container with is, is that it's an independent package of software and its dependencies. So what does that mean? What dependencies? Well, dependencies are things like the code, the runtime, the system libraries, and all of that configuration. We pretty much bundle all of that stuff and put it into a package. Now, what this does is by having this in an independent package and by giving this package all the tools and dependencies it needs and the instructions that it needs to be able to build itself, well, we kind of decouple that from our application. We no longer have to worry about this working on my colleague's machine, or we don't have to worry about subtle environmental configurations breaking our application. All of these things now, we should be at least more confident because we have packaged everything and have given the instructions for how the app is supposed to run. And this notion, all of these steps and instructions and things, we package into something called a container. And another very big aspect of that is these instructions are set in something and are shared in something called a container image. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So you can think of container images as say recipes for a cake maybe, and then containers being the actual cake itself, if it could build itself. But just like you have one container image, you can make as many instances or as many containers or as, as many cakes as you'd like from that single image. And that's a very, very powerful thing that helps at least try to resolve a lot of those issues we've had before containers. So that all sounds exciting. And now you're probably thinking, well, OK, uh, what kinds of services can I actually use in Azure that will help me, you know, start getting familiar or actually putting this into practice? And so there are four container services in Azure that I'd like to talk to you about today. There's the Azure Container Registry, which no matter where you are in your container journey, if you're thinking about uh, moving towards a container based approach, you will probably use this. Then there's the actual place where you host the containers. So there's something called an Azure Container Instance and the Azure Web App for containers. And finally, if you're a little bit past that already, fully invested into it, Azure Kubernetes service is probably something that will be the most appealing to your situation. So we'll start with the Azure Container Registry. So just like we can version control and distribute our source code, we can also do that with images, the container images that I spoke of, and we do that with the Azure Container Registry. So in here is where we store and distribute our images, just like we would possibly use Azure repos to store and distribute our code. And in this case, Azure Container Registry is a private managed registry service. So if you've ever used Docker Hub before, uh, those that's the community-based kind of public registry where you can share and um, use some of the uh, community verified or even publisher verified images uh, for your container development. And just like Docker Hub has private repositories, this is the similar version, but on Azure. So it's a private managed registry that you can share container images or custom images among your own organization and your own team. And as with most Azure products, there are uh, several tiers that you can use when it comes to the Azure Container Registry. There's the basic tier, which is pretty good for personal projects or if you're just getting familiar with containers and want to uh, play around with it. 
Then there's the standard tier, which most people will probably use in production in most teams. And finally, the premium tier is for those fully invested teams, the people who are already fully on a container based approach. And the reason you pay so much and why it's called premium is it's the only tier on Azure that uh, allows geo replication. It has 500 web hooks included and it is the only one that has increased throughput for Docker pools. So um, it does this with concurrent nodes. And if you've seen some of the Docker images that you can pull, they can be really, really large. So having that extra throughput, especially if you're dealing with a lot of that, can really help. And so premium tiers would probably be your best bet if you have that kind of scale. So, the Azure Container Registry is based on the open source Docker Registry version 2.0. So what this means is that it can support Docker compatible images, but it can also support OCI images and artifacts or open container initiative compliant artifacts. And that is an open source set of standards uh, for how image uh, for image specifications. And again, as with most Azure products, you can manage it either with the CL through the CLI or the portal or the API. And just as repos act as the target of our CI CD workflows with source code, we can use Azure Container Registry to be and use it to integrate into our container development workflow. This could now be the target for our images when we are done with them or continue iterating on them. And just like we can automate our build and release tasks, we can also automate the tasks for container development with ACR tasks. And what these things can do are rebuild images or um, uh, start off a process if we have a commit that somehow changes the base image or changes some part of the code. So it's very similar to how we are already used to um, working with source code. And, and this, this mechanism in Azure is just a very good parallel to how we can work with containers. And so now I'd like to show you a demo of how to create an Azure Container Registry via the CLI. It's very simple. And since I'm feeling extra lucky today, after that, I'm also going to show you uh, how to push an image to the brand new registry that we just created. So I'm going to switch over to my commander here, turn off my camera. And we are going to start. So I am already logged in via the Azure CLI here using the AZ login command. And first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an Azure resource group. We're going to hope that this name is not already taken. And you can use an existing one, but I highly advise doing uh, not doing that. And the reason is it's kind of a best practice to actually dedicate a resource group to a registry. This lowers your risk of deleting a collection of images in case you are creating a resource group with both the registry and say an Azure Container instance. That's very likely if you're playing around with it and just getting used to it. And then once you're done with the container instance, if you have grouped those together, you may accidentally delete any of the images that you've actually pushed to that registry. So we want to create this group to keep it isolated and keep the registry uh, on its own in its own resource group. So let's go ahead and create that. Wonderful, succeeded. And now literally the only other step we have to do is use the ACR Azure Container Registry create command. And of course, we'll have to pass in a couple uh, parameters. So first we're going to pass the group, the resource group that we've just created. So that's Gab demo. And then we're going to give it a name. So hopefully this is also not taken. Uh, we'll do Gab demo registry. 
And finally, we need to pass the tier, the SKU. So for this case, I just want the basic one. Let's give that a moment. Awesome, it's succeeded. So now I've created the resource group and now I've created the Azure Container Registry in that resource group. Now we'll want to take note of this login server right here because in the upcoming demos and when we deal with our registry, we will need to have the fully qualified name. So I'm just going to copy this really quick to make a note of it. Awesome. Okay. So now the registry is created and now it's ready for images. So the next part, the part that I was feeling lucky about, I'm going to now push an image to the registry that we've just created. So before we can do that, we actually have to log into the registry that we've just made. So we can do that with the AZ ACR because we're dealing with the Azure Container Registry and then the login command and we have to pass the name of the actual registry we want to log into. So that is gab demo registry. Let's give that a moment. Awesome, so we have succeeded. And now for the sake of time, I'm not going to pull any images. I already have some available. So let's take a look at the ones that are on here. So this is the one that I want to use. It's just a simple application uh, from the ACI Hello World that I've just modified very slightly. So we're going to use this one. Uh, this is the image that I want to push. And before we do that, what we'll have to do first is we have to tag this um, image that we want to push into our repo. So we'll do that using the Docker um, tag command and then we'll get the name of the initial um, image that I want to use which is the ACI hello gab demo and then we have to pass in the fully qualified name of our Azure Container Registry login server so that's why if we copied that from earlier which is not that uh, let me get it really quick Here it is. So that's why we wanted to make note of it earlier because we need it now. So we need the fully qualified name of our container registry login server. And then at this point we can um, call the image what we want. In, th in this case, I'm just going to keep consistent uh, so I know what image this is going to be. So I'm going to keep that. And then we have to tag it uh, with a version here. The reason I'm doing this is something called a stable tag. Uh, this is the first major version of this app, or in this case is more like a base image that I want to continue working off of. So I'm using the V1 to indicate that when I look, see this image in my repository, this is version one of this particular image. Uh, that I could possibly use later on and build on top of or just use as is. So we'll tag that and if we clear and now look at my images, you'll see that we have our tagged one right here. And now that's the one we're going to push. So we will use the docker push command followed by our fully qualified name of our image. Let's give that a moment to have it push all the way to the registry. Awesome. So let's get a little bit more space here and we can check that this is actually in our repo by using the again az azure container registry command repository list we want to check our 
GAB demo registry. So we have to pass in the name of the actual registry we want to search through. And just for a prettier output, let's just output that to a table. Awesome. So there is the image that I have just pushed to the new registry we just created. And uh, that was fairly quick, but just an indicative of how awesome it is to get really up and running with containers here. And it'll get a little bit more awesome in the next couple of demos. So now that we have our distributable images, uh, we actually, you know, we don't have them deployed anywhere yet. We actually don't have any um, uh, containers running yet. Oh, and I totally missed my joke here, but uh, every time I push something, either whether that's git push or pushing a container image, this song always comes through my head. <laughs> so hopefully you're singing that along as I'm thinking about it. So it is pushed and it was successful. So awesome. So now where do we actually host these containers? We have the images up there available for us to use, but uh, how do we, you know, deploy them? So the first option you have is the Azure Container Instance. So if you just need to get up and running, this is probably the best bet for you. This is the fully managed hosting environment for container workloads. So you don't need to provision or manage VMs. So if you don't care about underlying infrastructure or you don't need that type of control, you literally just need to get an, a container up and running on Azure. Azure Container Instance is probably the better uh, solution for you. Much like other compute solutions, you're built only for the time you use them. So these are almost like Azure functions, but for containers. You're built only for the time that they're running. Azure Container Instances support both Windows and Linux containers, and you can manage them with the same API. And if you need to, you can also mount Azure Container Instance, or you can you can mount Azure Files shares, pardon me, to an Azure Container Instance. And this is useful if you need to retrieve and persist state of some sort. Now, a key difference with this uh, Azure Container Instance and the next option we'll see is that here for Azure Container Instances, you can actually specify the exact CPU cores and memory that you want for your instance. And if I haven't made it clear, this is the fastest and simplest way to run containers in Azure. And to kind of demonstrate that, I want to move on with that demo. And I actually want to deploy an image, the one that we just deployed into our registry or pushed into our registry, and deploy it into an Azure Container Instance. So let's head back over to my terminal here. Let's give some more space here. And what we're going to do is, because we want to isolate things like before, I'm going to create another resource group to actually hold the container instance. And we'll see that in a moment, why that's important. So we'll use the az group create command. We'll name it. In this case, I'll try ACI, ACI demo group. And we'll do West US2. Awesome. So now we have a uh, brand new resource group that we can use and can isolate the container in. And now we will use uh, a, another command with a, quite a few parameters, but we'll get through them. So now we actually want to create the container and deploy a specific image, specifically the one that was in our registry that we just pushed. So to do that, we would use az container create we will pass in the resource group we just created. So that is ACI demo group. We will give our container instance a name. So we're gonna do, well, let's do, uh, hello, whoops, Gab. And now we want to specify the actual image that we want deployed. So again, we want the fully qualified name here. Uh, let me double check that that's all correct. Yep, so it's the fully qualified Azure Container Registry server that we have. 
and it's the name of our image, right? ACI hello gab demo. And we must add the tag, must be explicit. And now once it's deployed, another handy thing we should do is give a DNS name label. So let's do hello gab, whoops, demo. And this particular image requires um, a connection to the AD port uh, in order for us to talk to the container. And now this is the part where it gets more demo-y. So let me fill this in and I'll explain why you would want to do something else. So in order to do this, we need to first pass in the registry username. And in this case, it's going to be the same as the name of our registry. So it'll be gab demo registry. And now we also unfortunately have to pass in a password. Not unfortunately, it's meant to be secure, but let me just finish this and then explain what you, sh you should do and it would be much better. So at this point, um, what would be the best case to do is to actually use a service principle to do the authentication here. That way you don't have to pass it in through here. But for the sake of this demo, we're going to actually grab the registry password. So let's go over to my portal here and let's find that. Uh, so there's our Gab demo registry and we want to go to access keys. And this is what we want to do. We want to enable an admin user so that we can actually use this, these credentials to uh, be able to complete the task that we're about to do. So well, you'll see this actually generates a couple password keys and we will copy one of these. Now what's what's okay about this right now in, in this demo is that I can regenerate these. So you know you can you can try to grab the password now uh, but I'm doing this for the sake of the demo. So um, like I said this is just for the sake of this demo. Uh, in reality you would want to use um, as an Azure service principle to authenticate instead. But at this point, this is everything you need to create that container and to deploy it into the um, Azure container instance uh, or deploy the image that we specified rather. And let's give that a moment. It looks good. It's running. And we'll give it a few moments to think. Awesome, so now it is deployed and now if we go and take this, see we have our uh, label here. Now if we go over, and try to go through here. Woohoo! It worked. So this is an image that I've modified slightly to include this Homer Simpson woohoo GIF. Uh, changed it here, and this is running from an Azure Container instance that has been spun up that I've just created. So that is pretty much how fast and how simple it is to create uh, an Azure Container instance. And you'll see that this kind of short-lived, this on-demand kind of scenario really works with the Azure Container instance. So um, it is really advised to use Azure Container instances for these kinds of things. Go back here. We will clear this. Uh, Oops, there we go. Get some space here. And now, uh, because I don't want that running, because remember we are going to be built or I'm going to be built for the mo all the time that it's running. Uh, that's why I created a separate group. So we're going to delete that group. Yes, I do. I don't want to get built. Not a lot, at least. 
And what this does is because I've isolated the Azure Container Instance to this particular group and put my registry on a different group, if for whatever reason that I was just playing around with this, which I was, uh, I can just delete and get rid of the Azure Container Instance, just everything that's part of this group. But I still keep the images that I've previously pushed uh, on the on my Gab demo registry. Uh, if I had paired those two together, I would lose those images that I have pushed because they are coupled within the same resource group. So it's important to keep in mind uh, that you want to separate these things. And um, as you start using more and more and start sharing the registry across multiple containers, it becomes very likely that you forget that it's there. So it's really a really good practice to kind of keep those two separate. That way you don't lose any images that you have pushed into that registry. So I'll let that run. That's going to take a moment, but uh, that is pretty much the quick demo for deploying the image that we just pushed uh, straight to the Azure Container Instance. And you saw that it was running uh, via the instance there. So in contrast, we have the Azure Container Instance for, again, these on-demand scenarios and, and things. But what about the other option? The other option is this, Azure Web App for Containers. So this sounds similar because it is similar. It should be familiar to you if you've been using Azure uh, App Services uh, for your development uh, workflow. Where Azure Web App for containers best is best suited is for longer running applications. So if you are used to Azure App Service and all the features that it has and you want to take advantage of all of those things, you would want to run your containers using Azure Web App for containers. It has the typical app service plans that you're used to. So again, to, to contrast that from the Azure Container Instances, um, you pay as you go there or you pay as it's running. Here you have the very defined SKUs, right? You can't, you cannot set the specific CPU cores or memory like you can in Azure Container Instances. But if you know and can budget that way or are used to developing around those constraints, then this might be the better solution for you. When you do deploy uh, containers with Azure Web App for containers, you, you deploy the containerized app with your preferred dependencies. And as before, uh, if you're used to all of the monitoring and diagnostic tools available to you and you need that when you deploy your containerized applications, you'll want to use Azure Web App for containers. Uh, remember, with Azure Container Instances, you, you really don't care about that. You don't have access to that. You do have some logging, but it's not as verbose and not as granular as what you would get here. So that's something to keep in mind and lastly, if you have, you know, things that need to always be on, maybe they are not running uh, as often or is not as active, things like dev or test environments or just web, web hosting, things that always need to be on, Web App for Containers is certainly the way to go. Uh, you would not want to choose Azure Container Instances for that. And now you're thinking, okay, that's cool, but you know what, Adrian, I actually fully have embraced the container-based approach. Well, then you probably were looking forward to the Azure Kubernetes service. So this is the managed Kubernetes hosting environment. So when you get to this level of using containers uh, for your solutions, uh, this is probably something that will most apply to you. You're not dealing with learning about containers anymore or what they are or how they fit into your specific workflow. You are now fully versed, maybe even have multiple containers or services already, and you are not in the process of migrating to containers. You're now in the process of you know, dealing with everything that you have. Here with Azure Kubernetes Service, uh, you get to control how you scale and you have the greatest control on how you do that. The way Azure Kubernetes Service helps you uh, because you have so many containers and services to deal with, one of those things is container orchestration. As you grow and grow and have many more things to take care of, container orchestration becomes more and more of a problem rather than say in your in the other options where you're just wanting to get started or wanting to move over to a container for your application. 
And one thing to note is that with Azure Kubernetes Service, Azure VMs are utilized under the hood. So that means you pay for the VM instances that you are using. And you also pay for the storage and the networking resources that are consumed by the clusters that you create. But with this, if you do fully invest into the container based approach and you know move over to mostly containers and are starting to orchestrate them with Azure Kubernetes service, you can be confident that this is a flexible and future proofed way of uh, managing a container environment. So we've learned about containers. We've learned about what the different service types are in Azure that we can use if we wanted to get started with them. But now you might be wondering, well, which one do I use? And I know I had a very difficult time understanding the differences between um, Azure Container Instances and Azure Web App for Containers. But um, if we were to iterate and show through the main differences, uh, if you're getting started or you are thinking about migrating over your top two choices would be between the container instance and the web app for containers. For Azure container instances, they are the ready to use thing. So again, just like I showed you in this demo, if it's on demand, if it's something quick, if it's something small, if it's something with burst scenarios, you know, things that are unpredictable but short lived. Azure Container Instances are the perfect thing to use if you want to run containers on Azure. You also want to use this if you only need the high level operation management. Remember, you don't have access to the actual infrastructure there. If something goes wrong, you cannot you know, see what's wrong with the machine or why your container is not uh, working or even diagnose it and debug it yourself. You've laid that off and have become hands off with that. And you only use container instances because you wanted that, uh, you know, get up and running quickly. Uh, at least when you choose it, you did not care about that level of um, infrastructure management. And as before, you if you only have one or a few containers or services to deploy, Azure Container Instances are your best bet or at least well suited for it. Now, on the other hand, if you are already familiar with Azure Web Apps and Azure App Services, and you have long running always on web apps, again, with the web hosting or things that always need to be on, then Azure Web App for Containers is the better scenario. Whereas Azure Container Instances are good for the short things, the quick things, the proof of concept things. Azure Web App for Containers are great for the applications that you may already have and are supporting and always need to be on and always need to be running. Again, if you need that finer granularity, if you need the monitoring because you're supporting that application and you need the diagnostic tools and want to be able to debug what's going on, Azure Web App for Containers is the better solution. Now it's similar here to Azure Container Instances in that if you only have one or a few containers to deploy, then uh, this would be a good choice. And if you have low cost environments, uh, that can take advantage of the free tiers. So again, great examples are a dev environment, test in environment. Maybe you're running some jobs in the background or doing some processing, things like that. If you know that uh, there are tiers, uh, free tiers or basic tiers, low cost tiers that you can take advantage of, then you may want to think about using Azure Web App for containers rather than using the pay to go um, ready to use container instances. And so once you get past this level and once you are, you know, you have multiple containers now, now you're getting into uh, a full either microservice architecture or you are having more than a few containers. This is where Azure Kubernetes service makes the most sense. And things you should really consider before using it is it almost seems um, common sense, but it still needs to be said. If your team already has working knowledge of Kubernetes, then Azure Kubernetes Service makes sense to use. 
I see a lot of development teams just say, oh, let's just go to Kubernetes and nobody knows what it is. Not only do you have uh, to have a uh, ramp up time to train your team on what that actually is and what how Kuber Azure Kubernetes service actually helps you, um, but you deal with the ramifications of not actually knowing what Kubernetes does and how you should use it. So again, it's a strong emphasis to say, um, you know, obviously Azure Kubernetes service is more beneficial to teams who are already working in this space and probably already have a lot of containers. They're fully invested in the container based approach and they again have many containers and services to manage. The scale of this um, having all of these things to manage is what makes Azure Kubernetes service uh, pretty much required or some useful to these kinds of teams and these kinds of solutions. So with that many containers and services comes you know, orchestration needs or much more complex workloads that would be very tedious for somebody to run. And so Azure Kubernetes service is the, the thing that you would use to fill in that gap. And finally, uh, though we all love Azure and probably will continue to use it, if you do want to keep your infrastructure portable with other cloud providers, then using Azure Kubernetes service is something that you want to keep in mind. It is based on open source tech, so the fact that you're using this uh, should make you more confident that you will be able to transfer it over to either GCP or AWS if you ever needed to or wanted to in the future. So let me just turn this back on real quick. And so that is pretty much a high level overview, but I think hopefully a descriptive overview of the available Azure Container Services in you. And now you are now better acquainted with each other. So Danka, thank you. Maramik Salamat, uh, thank you so much for staying till the end here. Um, if you have any questions, I will be checking in a moment the Q&A in Teams. Uh, and if we don't get to it or you don't think of it or you missed it, there's always the Discord um, channel. I have a specific one specifically for this talk. It's called the Containers Channel. So I'll be there as well, uh, looking to see uh, if there are any other questions. And um, you'll see here, that's my full name. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. And I, I usually tweet a lot about any of the LinkedIn learning um, courses that I publish. Uh, and a lot of the conferences, once this is all over, I'll be speaking at or even virtual conferences like this one. So thank you so much. This was so fun and I'm so happy to have been a part of this uh, and I can't wait to see your, your questions or join you in the chat. So let me check out Q&A here. Oh, we have three questions here and we have a couple minutes, so let's go through them. So the first question I have here is, are, uh, I think you're asking, are you in a VS Code session or in the Azure CLI bash in the Azure portal? So the terminal that I was using, I'll bring it back up here. It's actually a terminal emulator, but what I was using was the Azure CLI in bash on, on here. So I was not using the Azure Cloud Shell and I was not using it uh, via the portal, if that makes sense. Uh, next question I see here, uh, why not just delete the instance? Uh, why not just delete the instance, but the entire resource group? Um, well, I did delete the entire resource group uh, that was holding the, the instance, so I'm not sure if I understand your question, but by deleting the resource group that held my Azure Container instance, I only got rid of the instance, which is exactly what I wanted. I did not want to get rid of the registry because for at a later date, if I wanted to use that same image that I deployed to my Azure Container instance, then I will still have it. I don't want to delete it. That's also the reason I kept them both in separate resource groups. So I, if you're asking if why not just delete the instance in the portal, you can do that too, um, but please clarify if that's not 
uh, the question, <laughs> uh, but that's how I understood it. And oh, a couple more questions coming in. Awesome. So one question here. Uh, let me. Uh, yep. So one question here is, are there any pitfalls one should keep in mind if you want to migrate between cloud providers? Well, uh, there are many. Um, what I can tell you is that if you do follow any of the open source standards, like for example, the Open Container Initiative, which is an open source group that defines the specifications, uh, you always, always have a higher likelihood of being able to uh, port over between the three uh, because they are supposed to be following those kinds of standards. Obviously, if you have um, uh, Docker based images or uh, again the OCI standards, any specifications or standards that are pretty much agreed upon between the three, uh, you'll have a higher likelihood of being able to safely port between the three. If you go super custom or obviously use any services or things that are very specific to one, then you know common sense that may not port over as easily. But if you try to architect your solutions so that they follow again these standards or some agreed upon architectures between the three, you'll have a better time uh, going between the three. And let's see, oh, a couple more coming in. Um, are you going to share the scripts? I can, um, I will be tweeting those out. Uh, I can get those together for you in a GitHub repo. If you give me at least till the end of, uh, to later tonight for you until later afternoon for me, <laughs> um, I'll definitely have those up there. I would like to prepare that for you in a nicer repo uh, and get that up there on GitHub. Um, so be sure to follow me on Twitter uh, because that's where I tweet out um, or share most of these resources every time I have talks like this. Um, but I will be glad to share these scripts. And let's see, how can we store data of container in Azure File Share? So, and the Azure Container Instance, for example, it can use an Azure file share as a mount. So you would mount that just like you would mount any other volume storage uh, with containers. Uh, it just provides you with the capability to use Azure files as that um, storage choice, right? So you would mount it to the Azure container instance, and within that you'd be able to use it um, as your storage mechanism with the container. And I believe that is it. Um, well, one last one, one got in really quick. GitHub will be good. What is your Git URL? Uh, I can show that really quick. So it is just my, my username is really just this. Pretty much on all platforms, it will be Adrian Tucka. So on Twitter, on Instagram and on GitHub, uh, you can find me via this username, Adrian Tucka. And I believe that's it. If you have any other questions, I will be happy to answer them. I will be in the Discord channel. Again, uh, the one specific for me is called the Containers Channel. Thank you again for staying with me. I hope you enjoyed Azure um, Global Azure Virtual Bootcamp, and uh, can't wait to do this again. So thank you and goodbye.